<laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Doc Pete, and we do have a very good show for you uh, today. And actually, it's timely. I'm just trying to equip you with tools <clears throat> that will allow you to uh, at least assess a situation from the standpoint of physical diagnosis. You know, we already started with Terry's nails. Terry's nails being something that was significant for certain disease. I'm going to have to ask you to go back and, of course, look at that one at another time. It'll, it is available, should be made available to you for free, uh, at least at this time. Um, let me just say this. Uh, inspection, percussion, palpation, and auscultation is what we've talked about before as necessary before you even think about ordering a test. Let me give you a little simple uh, diagnosis, diagnostic tool. When you are looking at a hand, this is called the thenar eminence, the hypothenar eminence, eminence. Guess what? You see it's eminent, don't you? It's sticking out, don't you? That's what they mean by eminence, like a little mountain on the hand, so to speak, a little mound. Uh, Anyway, the point is, is if you touch this here, it's going to blanch for just a second, and guess what? Then it gets pink again. First of all, it's pink or it's reddish to begin with, okay? doesn't matter what color you are. Guess what? This part of your hand is going to be uh, more lighter. I should say more light. This part of your hand is going to be more dark. We used to refer to all those old school people out there who know what I'm talking about. This was a certain color and that was a certain color. I'm not getting into that. But anyway, if you if you notice, it's already red. Do you know what that means? That your hemoglobin, which is what is done in a little tube that's spun in a centrifuge, is above 7%. Now, what is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be uh, for a woman between, I believe, 12 and 14 in most labs, uh, and for a man between 14 and 16. Now, there are two things that can happen. It could be above that, and in that case, we'd have maybe a hemoglobin of 25, and that would be, of course, something like polycythemia, which is uh, an overabundance of red cells, but we're not getting into that today. Today, we're just talking about anemia and the heart. As you, somebody just passed out, you don't know if they're a diabetic or whatever, you want to check their heart out, just look at their palm and see is it red. Look at the, what, what was this, the hypo or the thenar? This was the hypo, remember? So this is the hypothenar eminence. As you press it and look at that person while they're out, and, and of course you're, you're going to be resuscitating them if they're not breathing on their own but if they are breathing on their own you want to try to assess them on the spot so you look at that thing our eminence and you see it's already pink or reddish so you know that their hemoglobin is above and what else you know is that their heart is sufficient to pump the blood out that's the other important part now we used to use of course besides your pulse which you get right here at the radius at the bottom down here you get it right here that's where the radius radio artery is the radio artery pulse is is taken right here okay you take the radio pulse usually with two fingers uh, we used to take it with the forefinger okay or actually we call that the first finger and the second finger this is the thumb but you just put it here right here and you assess the pulse but now, uh, let's just say the pulse is, you know, you're going to tell somebody that the pulse is strong or the pulse is thready. What does thready mean? That you can barely feel something coming through it. It's thread, like a thread. It's very thready, okay? So, again, this is all involving the hands, the pulse, the hypothenar eminence. It's called the HTI, hypothenar eminence. Of course, and in addition to that, you're looking at that person you pull down their, their eye, in this case right here, and you look at their, uh, what's called their conjunctivate, is the, con is the conjunctivate by inspection, is it pink? 
course, you have to know what pink is by looking at yours and making sure yours okay. So you've you've already received your lab recently, or you've looked at your eye at the same time you got your lab, and you know yours is above four, yours is about fourteen. So you know you're good. So then when you compare yours to somebody else's as they look, guess what? That is, of course, either less than or most of the time less than. But let me leave it like that uh, as far as the pinkness that you get until you get some pathologies. The other thing to look at is your nail bed, okay? I'm going to show you mine because I think one of these nails at least looks okay to show you. <laughs> As you, as again, this is pink also. Uh, believe it or not, the breath pressure is higher in the legs, about 10 millimeters or higher in the legs than in the um, in the arms. So if you have this, you, you can check the toes too if they're out. But I'm just saying, if you don't have a good breath pressure in the legs, you can rest assured that there's been some vasoconstriction and some problems, some major pathology possibly internal bleeding. We used to put on shock trousers. It used to be a way to maintain the blood pressure. Why? Because you have to make sure blood, the blood pressure goes to the head, right? The head and the heart. Those are the vital organs. Head, heart, and lungs for you to maintain oxygenation in the blood. But anyway, let me go back to this finger. And I'm going to use this finger. Don't take any offense, y'all. As you press this finger, the same principle involved. As you can tell, it got uh, blanched, as we used to say, blanched being the French, like from the French word blanc, meaning uh, white. But you, as you, as you push down, as you can tell, that is blanched. Now, as I let go, it almost immediately comes back to pink, and I'm just happy it does, because what that means is that my heart is functioning well, and of course, I don't have Terry's nails that has been discussed already. Are of course your um, your anemia, and of course your low heart uh, cardiac output, meaning that your heart is not putting out as it should because for whatever reason, either MI uh, heart attacks or it could be some blockage. Of course, if a person has a blockage at their lung, the the blood is not going to circulate in the fashion that it should. From what? The lower extremities, we'll talk a little bit about the cardiac cycle, the lower extremities with your um, your third space, etc. And you have a, of course, the uh, entering into the circulation coming up through your inferior vena cava to your right atrium, which is, this is my right over here. So your right atrium is, uh, uh, of course, let me, what am I talking about? That is my right, but not where my right atrium is. You want to go right in this area right here for the right atrium to listen to, uh, of course, certain heartbeats when we get into auscultation later. But anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you um, is this, that the atrium receives the blood, goes to the ventricles, both the right and the left, and then it gets pumped out. From the right atrium, you go to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, you go out through the pulmonary what? Artery. All right? So now the heart will return to from the lung in the pulmonary vein back into the left atrium and of course down from the left atrium through the mitral valve into the uh, ventricle which is on the left side. Now that is all very coordinated and we'll get into a little bit of that later with respect to the EKG but this is just an introduction for really, we were trying to talk about inspection, but I needed to talk about this because the condition that I did not mention that involves that cardiac flow that we just described is a pulmonary embolus, which is very common in the elderly for whatever reason due to inflammation and just getting old and not exercising. Yes, 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 there are clots that form within the calf. Uh, we call that, that area where the muscles are called the gastrocnemus. In that calf area, the deep veins there, of course, can form clots and throw them all the way up, what? Through the inferior vena cava to the what? What was that first chamber? The right atrium. The second chamber was the what? Right ventricle, going through the tricuspid valve, okay? 
going through that that clot can go up through the what pulmonary what artery or vein now an artery will leave the heart and the vein comes back so that's the pulmonary artery of course as it gets blocked it will be blocked right there and obstruct the blood flow causing an immediate loss of consciousness uh, shortness of the breath sometimes wheezing we started off talking about inspection but if you can inspect and see somebody's wheezing it's not all asthma and many a person has been treated incorrectly in our in our very good emergency rooms for asthma when actually it was a heart condition either blockage or not having enough blood going through you you will wheeze okay so that's going to be all we're going to give you today we want to just thank you for tuning in this was originally uh inspired to give our men a little bit more knowledge but i think everyone from the children on up need to receive this as far as their basic training as they aspire to maybe go into medicine or they aspire to want to help somebody that's out there on the street that's passed out. We love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Bless ya!